Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you for taking time to go through the module one review question for AZ900 exam series. My name is Sushant and I'm your instructor for this AZ900 examination course. In this module, we are going to test and validate the things what we have learned in the previous videos. Things like the types of cloud services, different types of cloud models, the shared responsibility model, etc. Which of the following describes a benefit of cloud services? So the key word over here is benefit of cloud services. Is it economics of scale? Is it fixed workload or unpredictable cost? So I'm going to eliminate the answers which are wrong because fixed workload is completely wrong because cloud provide you the most flexible workload choice. So Fixed workload is definitely a wrong answer. Unpredictable cost, definitely not. You can predict cost. There are ways you can calculate. We will learn about that in the future models. So definitely that is a wrong answer. The right answer is economics of scale. Because economics of scale is the ability to do things more cheaply and more efficiently when operating at a larger scale in comparison to operating at a smaller scale. Let's go through the second question. Which of the following refers to spending money upfront and then detecting that expense over time? So we're gonna find out the type of IT funding model which refers to spending money upfront. Is it operational expenditure? Definitely not. Operational expenditure is where you only pay for what you use. It's called OPEX model. So that is, you're not gonna pay upfront. Is it supply and demand? Definitely not. That's a different concept altogether. So the right answer is capital expenditure. Capital expenditure refers to spending of money on physical infrastructure upfront and then detecting that expense from your tax bill over time. The third question is, which of the following terms refer to making a service available with no downtime for an extended period of time? So the key word over here is no downtime. So what is that term? Is it agility? Definitely not. Agility is a term which is being referred to provision or make some service as soon as possible. It's definitely not fault tolerance because fault tolerance is a service capability you built into your service, which is resilient for failure. So the right answer is high availability because high availability keeps services up and running for long periods of time with little downtime, depending on the service in question. Which term from the list below would be viewed as the benefits of using cloud services? The key word over here is benefits of using cloud services. And what is that term? Is it unpredictable cost? Definitely not because you can predict cost of the cloud services. I'm going to definitely take you through that module, which is the last module where we're going to learn about the tools like TCO calculator, Azure pricing calculator, etc., to predict the cost of each services. Local reach only? Definitely not because cloud is global. So you can provision the service anywhere in the world or closer to a user. Is it elasticity? Absolutely right. So elasticity is that term you are looking at this particular question, which is a benefit of using cloud services. So some of the other common benefits include agility, economics of scale, etc., along with elasticity. From the choice below, which is one of the advantages of moving your infrastructure to Azure? So the key word over here is advantages of moving your infrastructure to the cloud. And we have to find one answer from the below option. So let's go through that answer. The move reduces capital expenditure. The first option is right because public cloud deployments reduce capital expenditure because there is far less infrastructure to buy. You efficiently rent only what you use as you use it. So the CapEx is the right answer. Uh, what about the next option? The move reduces operational expenditure or operational expenses? Definitely not. 
Third option is the move allows for complete control of infrastructure resources, which is wrong as well. So the right answer is the move reduces capex. Which cloud model provides the greatest degree of ownership and control? So we're going to find out which one provides the greatest degree of ownership and control. Is it hybrid? No, because hybrid, you work with a private cloud and a public cloud. So you don't have a greatest degree of control in the public cloud space, which is wrong. Is it public cloud? Definitely not because you are at the end of the day relying upon the services provided by your cloud provider. So the right answer is private cloud. The private cloud provides the greatest degree of ownership and control. Which cloud model provides the greatest degree of flexibility? So here we are going to find out the flexibility options. Is it public? Definitely not because when you use public cloud, Again, you are relying on the services available with public cloud. Sometimes you would have to keep the data which is compliant. So you won't be able to keep that in the public cloud. Is it private cloud? Again, private cloud will not give you great amount of flexibility because sometimes if you would like to reduce the cost of your hardware, you would like to use public cloud for instance. So the right answer over here is hybrid cloud. The hybrid cloud model provides the greatest degree of flexibility as you have the option to choose either public or private depending on your requirement. Which of the following describes a public cloud? So we basically have to read the statement and decide if that statement resonates something about public cloud. So let's read the first one. Is owned and operated by the organization that uses the resources from the cloud. Definitely not, because it is not owned and operated by the organization that uses the resources from the cloud. That term refers to private cloud. So public cloud lets organizations run application in the cloud or on premises. Absolutely wrong, because public cloud will not allow organizations to run application on on-prem. It only allows them to run on the cloud. The last statement is. Public cloud provides resources and services to multiple organizations and users who connect through the secure network connection. Absolutely right. Public cloud provides resources and services to multiple organizations and users who connect through a secure network connection. You have legacy applications that require specialized mainframe hardware and you have newer shared applications. Which cloud deployment model? would be best for you. So the key words over here is, you require specialized mainframe hardware. That's a key word. And you have a newer shared applications as well. So do you think it's gonna be a public cloud? Definitely not because it's very difficult for you to run your specialized mainframe hardware in the public cloud area. Is it private cloud? Could be, but in this case, you need to run certain new shared applications as well. So again, it's not public cloud. So the right answer is hybrid cloud because hybrid cloud is a public and private cloud combined. You can run the newer applications on commodity hardware you rent from the public cloud and maintain your specialized mainframe hardware on premises as well. Which of the following requires the most user management of the cloud services? The keyword is most user management. Is it IaaS? Absolutely right, because IaaS give you more control and flexibility, but it comes at a price. You still have to maintain your operating system, update the patches, etc. Is it platform as a service? No. In the platform as a service, you only manage your data and application. Uh, is it software as a service? Absolutely, again, no. So the correct answer is infrastructure as a service because that requires the most user management of cloud services. Microsoft Office 365 is an example of, we are, tr we are trying to find out what type of cloud model is Microsoft Office 365. Is it infrastructure as a service? No. Exchange on-prem is an infrastructure as a service. Is it platform as a service? Again, no. 
platform as a service is where you get an application to develop, deploy, test, and validate. So the right answer is software as a service because SaaS is typically licensed through a monthly or annual subscription, which is how Office 365 is being built. Question number 12, which of the following describes platform as a service? Again, we need to read through the statement to see which one appropriately matches pass. So the first statement is, users are responsible for purchasing, installing, configuring, and managing their own software, which is operating system, middleware, and application. Definitely it's not the right answer because in pass, you don't have to take care of your operating system, your middleware. You only take care of your application and your data. The second statement is, Users create and deploy applications quickly without having to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. Absolutely right. So this is the correct statement for platform as a service. And the last option is users pay an annual or monthly subscription. That's an example of a software as a service. So the right answer is the second option, which is as lets users create and deploy applications quickly without having to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. Which of the following requires the most user management of the cloud services? So we are trying to find out the most user management of the cloud services. So is it infrastructure as a service? Absolutely correct, because infrastructure as a service is where a user have to manage the operating system, the application layer, the data layer, the middleware, etc. Is it platform as a service? Absolutely not. In the platform, you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure completely. Is it software as a service? Software as a service is where you will get a service in an annual or a monthly bill subscription model where you don't have to manage anything. So the correct answer is the first option. Infrastructure as a service requires the most user management of cloud services. Let's look at question number 14. You are developing an application and want to focus on building, testing, and deploying. You don't want to worry about managing the underlying hardware or software. Which cloud type is best for you? So the key word over here is you want to focus on building, testing, and deploying. So that means that you don't have to worry about the underlying hardware. So is it infrastructure as a service? Definitely not, because in infrastructure as a service, you will worry about managing the underlying hardware and software. Is it software as a service? Definitely not, because software as a service will not give you ability to focus on building, testing, and deploying your application. So the correct answer is third, which is platform as a service, because platform as a service is the best choice here because PaaS services handle the IT management tasks for you. You are running a virtual machine in a public cloud using IaaS. Which model correctly reflects how the resources is being managed? So the key word over here is you're running a VM in public cloud. So running a VM in public cloud is IaaS model and which model correctly reflect how the resources is being managed. And we learned about in the module one about shared responsibility model. If you run an IaaS instance in a VM, there are a lot of shared responsibility which you share with the cloud service provider. So the first answer is right. Second option is cloud user management model. I don't even know what that's about. We never learned about that. And user management model. So that is definitely a private cloud option. So the correct answer is the first option, which is the shared responsibility model. Under the shared responsibility model, management of resource is shared between the cloud provider and the end user. The cloud provider is responsible for the cloud resources and the end user is being responsible for the service being configured and managed correctly. That concludes the module one review question answer. In the next video, we're gonna explore the core Azure architectural components. So I hope the information provided on the module one was useful and you were able to benefit from that. So let's go and explore the core Azure architectural components in the next video.
I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.